Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't yet, I say this on every video, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content that we're putting out. Pretty much every 48 hours we got content going out. So don't stay stuck with your business. Make sure you subscribe, stay up to date with all the content. Now, if you want to learn more about our sports accelerator program, Okay, visit the description below. You can set up a free call with me where we can jump on Zoom and we can discuss your business and see what options we have to help you to move forward. Okay, so don't stay stuck. Number of ways we can help you and your business. So today I want to talk about soccer camps, right? Now, I get asked on a regular basis, Leo what is the best way to make my soccer camps a success or how can I make them a success right now we're at the start of the year and it's well the most successful trainers that I'm currently working with have all their camps planned out scheduled out ready to go for the entire 2024 so if you are a coach in that similar position where you're thinking to yourself, right, I've got a camp coming up. How can I make it a success? I want to share with you four very simple things that you can do to implement into your camps. Right. This is more specific to soccer, but really and truly, whatever sport you're in, you can apply these four things as well. Right. So if you're in basketball, if you're in cricket, if you're in paddle, if you're in tennis, if you're in American football, if you're in baseball, whichever sport you're in, because we have viewers from multiple sports who watch our channel on a regular basis, then you can implement these four things that I'm about to share with you today to make your sports camps a success. Now, the first one is have a clear camp objective. Right. When a lot of coaches run these these camps, what they tend to focus on is how many kids can I get onto this camp? Now, obviously, we want to profit. We want to make money. But you've got to remember that you're not the only coach in your area that is running camps right? all across the United States in every city. There's going to be 10 plus coaches or trainers who are running uh, camps on a regular basis. This might be on a quarterly basis. This might be on a monthly basis. This might be on a, a seasonal holiday basis. But there will be camps very well, consistently in your local area. So if you're just a coach or a trainer that is saying, right, I just want to have 20 plus kids on that camp. I want to charge X amount of money and I want to profit. Okay, that's fantastic. And that's a great objective to have. But when I, when I talk about having a clear objective for your camp, I focus more on what is the ultimate goal and the results you're trying to achieve with these camps. Okay, are you just making these camps just for extra babysitting for when parents are at work and their kids they're sending their kids to to stay with you for the entire day right so is it babysitting or is it more specific to a problem you're trying to solve right so in in soccer right there's certain problems that you you might be looking to solve right it might be supplemental training it might be confidence building it might be technical development, it might be skill development, it might be goalkeeping, it might be defending, it might be offensive, right? So it could be a camp based on a specific position that you're trying to attract, right? It could be a skills development camp, it could be a confidence building camp. So the co when I talk about confidence building, it might be skill development, but plus we also do some theory work in the afternoon or as part of the camp on a daily basis so that it's helping players to build their confidence away from the field as well. So what is the objective of your camp? What is the end result that you're trying to look to achieve 
with the participants that uh, that do and and come to your camps right is it just they're showing up you're just doing a couple of games and drills and they go home right so essentially if that's it then it's more of a babysitting service that you have going on or is it a camp where there is a clear objective you're looking to get a result with a, with your players that you're working with and what is something that you're looking what what can those players do after they finish the camp right is it a camp that then there's accountability after or is it a camp that they just do it they get some feedback and then i'll see you at the next camp right so what's the clear objective that you're you're trying to achieve at these camps right so there's a number of things you you should be looking for right so who's your target audience so what is the age group what is the skill level that you're looking to to attract okay so when you have those things in in lockdown then that will help you to then think about right what's now the objective that I'm looking to achieve on with with my camps right now the second one is planning and organization right so when i talk about planning and organization i talk about is the camp on a set day set time do you need indoor space in order to make this camp a success or can we be outdoors do you have permission to be outdoors or indoors right or are you just using a local public park where you're hoping that no one kicks you off right and also do you have all a system in place where parents are registering onto that camp you're grabbing their data and then once that camp is done you can then sell them onto your small group training or your one on one training okay so what is the objective you're looking to achieve once that camp is done with the data and and an organization and planning that you have have done to make this camp a success right so when i think of planning and organization i think of those types of things right is it set day set time that the camp is being run uh, do we have business insurance or camp insurance to be able to run the camp are parents signing a waiver form that they agree to your terms and conditions for that camp have you got permission if you need to go indoors or outdoors right these are all the the planning and organization side of running a successful camp and once you have all those boxes ticked then you will be able to run a successful camp okay and then remember once you have the data of your participants or the parents that have signed up and registered for your camp what's the next process for them right how are you then following up with those customers are you calling them to ask to ask for feedback how the camp went are you looking to then add them to your newsletter that you send out on a regular basis with content offers promotions are you then looking to sell them onto your small group or one-on-one -on -one training program so what is the next steps that you are looking to achieve once those participants and those customers finish your camp right so that we can then sell them on to something else that your business does right the third one is focusing on skill development and, and fun right so skill development and fun is make that kind of goes down to the first point which is having a clear objective right so making sure that you're designing drills and activities that cater to the skill levels of your participants right so that that also comes down to good planning and organization so making sure that right if you're running an elite type of soccer camp you've got to make sure that all the drills and activities that you're going to be running for that camp are based upon the skill level that you're going to have at that camp right because if you have an elite type of player at your camp and you're doing very basic uh, drills and activities the motivation of that participant is not going to be high and ultimately they're not going to they're not going to want to come to your camp again 
right? So making sure and ensuring that there's there's progression, right, in difficulty to challenge and enhance the abilities of the players that are doing your camps. Okay, now the next one is incorporate age appropriate games and exercises to keep participants engaged and motivated, right? This kind of goes down to staying on the skill development and fun, but making sure that your camp is challenging for every participant that is that is on that camp. Right. So again, making sure that your drills, activities are fun, engaging and that you're challenging them so that when they step away from the camp, right, they feel that, you know what, I've been challenged. Uh, my skills have been developed and now I can take what I've learned and take it into my, my club team and onto the weekend in my in my games. Fourth point is safe and exclusive environment. Right, so when I talk about safe and exclusive environment, what I mean more specifically is making sure that the environment that you're running your camp in is safe from any danger, right? So making sure that you do your negligence checks to make sure that if you're using, for example, a public park, public local park, making sure that there's no broken glass, uh, there's no holes in the, gr uh, in the ground, where players could essentially you know trip over or twist an ankle or get injured just making sure that the the, the playing environment that you're going to be running the camp is safe in order for your players to be able to do their training on and have a really good uh, camp experience also making sure that there's uh, th there's there's several checks Right, so if you're bringing on coaches to help you run your camp, so making sure that they are all, uh, they all have their criminal background checks up to date, making sure that they are eligible to, to work with with children, and that they have their, their coaching licenses to be able to run and help you on those camps. Okay, also making sure that you have insurance to run your camp, and also making sure that parents are registering and signing a waiver form to make sure that they understand the risks that are involved in sports participation right because you know there is a possibility that on a camp their child might get injured right because you know soccer is a contact sport there is a possibility of injury but to protect you as a business owner you need to make sure that parents are signing waiver forms to make sure that they understand that they are holding themselves accountable for those risks involved in those those camps, those, those type of camps. Right now, the next one and the last one, this goes down to safe, safe and exclusive environment. Right. So we've made sure that the camp is safe for our participants. Now, when I talk about exclusive environment, I'm talking about making sure that the camp is specific to a certain few types of players, right? So if you want to run an elite camp, making sure that this camp is exclusive for those types of players. If you're running a camp for beginners, making sure that there's a system and a, a method in place to filter out players who are not beginners, right? Because the worst thing you want to have, and I've seen this with a lot of camps that I've been part of in the past, and also camps that I've seen coaches run, that they make it open to all types of skill levels. And the problem you might sometimes get is you might have a group of about 12 players Two of those players are more elite type of players and then the rest of them are all beginners. And then what starts to happen is those elite players aren't being challenged and that could disrupt your camp because they might lack concentration, they like, might lack motivation, they might start to mess around and disrupt the other players because they, aren't, they, they don't feel that they're being challenged enough during the camp.
Okay, so making sure that you're, you're making your camp exclusive for the type of players that you want at those camps. And how do you do that? You make sure that you have a process in place that filter, filters out certain types of players. So when a parent onboards onto your camp, by right, making sure that you have a, a checklist of things that they have to, to answer. So you could have a questionnaire that parents have to answer and that will give you more data on where their child is at. So that way you're filtering out players who aren't the right fit for your type of camp. Okay, so these are all things that we teach in our Accelerator program. So if you need more help with this and you want to learn more about our Accelerator program, this is our number one business coaching program that we have at our company. Uh, we've currently got coaches in all sports who are part of this getting great results so if you want to learn more, visit the description below. You can apply for a call where we jump on Zoom. It's about a 25 minute application process where we go through a number of questions to see if you're the right fit for what we have and for our accelerator program. OK, thank you for watching. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest content.